Renewable energy has been a major topic for many decades, but now it has become part of one of the current megatrends, which is sustainability, and with the growing demand for sustainable energy, new investment opportunities rise. We've visited Ray Wood, he is head of renewable energies at Credit Suisse Investment Banking. Good Ray, morning. what um, are the most important latest trends that we're looking at? Well, renewable energy is very broad, Joy, so it can be big utility deployment by major large cap uh, global multinationals, or it can be an idea that an entrepreneur has backed by a venture capitalist at a very early stage, and that's one of the most interesting things about renewable energy, just the broad spectrum of opportunities. There are many trends on the commercial scale rapid deployment area part of the spectrum, like wind and solar and hydro and geothermal. And there's a lot of capital at work bringing those costs down and making it very competitive in today's tough world economy. There's also lots of work being done on second generation biofuels, algae, advanced batteries for electric vehicles, and new technologies that would dramatically transform the cost structure of what is still a more expensive form of power without regard to the, the traditional fossil fuel uh, pollution and externalities that we live with. Which of these energies that you've just talked about would you say have the, the most promising growth rate in the next coming years? Well, I think um, one of the areas that will be very intriguing for investors is this area we call smart grid. In a, in a time when governments are debating between stimulus and austerity and what can the consumer afford, we all know, we all believe that fossil fuels need to be phased down and there's a price for, for carbon and other greenhouse gases and other pollutants. And so we as a society want to move incrementally toward cleaner uh, energy, reliable energy. But the question is, can society afford it? One of the great things the smart grid will facilitate, and these are meters with advanced software that allow us all to communicate and more realistically assess how we use our power and how we price it. This will enable us to use it um, more consistently and more efficiently and drive down demand in the near term without affecting the economy. So I think this is a way, it's much more cost effective than some of the other technologies. There's still a lot of work on solar and we're about to see a major increase in the deployment of solar power in North America. Um, wind power, the two biggest markets are China and the United States and we're talking about hundreds of thousands of megawatts which will end up, could end up being you know 10 or 15 percent of the total capacity of the power we use in, in the world for alternative energy. So there are many trends, but there are um, some areas where investors can, can do very quite well, I believe. Now, you've been mentioning solar power and wind power. What are the, the new upcoming energies that we haven't heard of yet? What is science working on and what, what will be the trends, the long-term trends? Well, if we can replace the use of oil, whether it's algae or whether it's some other way um, to refine gasoline products without as, as significant use of oil, that would be a game changer. And it would be very good for the world economy, both, both, uh, both on a security basis as well as on a price basis. So stay tuned to ongoing improvements in second or third generation biofuels, as well as with algae. We think there's great long-term potential there. But also as we move toward more efficient batteries and we can have electric vehicles that don't use any gasoline, that would be quite transformative given uh, the amount of imports the United States has of foreign oil. Now we've been hearing a lot of talks about new nuclear power coming up. Will green energies win that race in the end? Well, nuclear power is clean from a, a sense of it doesn't uh, release carbon, and so it has many supporters in the United States and in Europe, and um, it provides baseload energy, which is quite reliable. It will give you power whether the, cl whether the clouds are out or whether the wind is blowing, um, but it is quite expensive. And we're in an uh, era right now of low commodity prices. So one of the challenges for nuclear is um, the, the projects are so large and expensive that are, is any company big enough to withstand the risk of cost overruns or a major disruption? So nuclear, uh, while it could be quite, quite important um, and has played a very major role in Europe and an increasing role in China, it has many uh, headwinds today due to the low price of, of uh, natural gas and oil. Now, if I were uh, to invest in sustainable energies, where would I go? What would I do coming in as a newcomer? 
Well, it really depends on your tolerance for risk. There are utility scale companies that earn a very uh, regulated um, and um, uh, fair rate of return using mature technologies. And then there are other companies that are going public that have quite disruptive technologies, but they could work or not work. And it really depends on whether you want to make a play for a very large return and take a bigger risk, or whether you're more comfortable earning something consistently um, at a lower rate of return. So um, there is no one green stock that's going to be best for all parties. The good news is that the markets are now, there are many more IPOs. Um, these companies have liquid market caps, and there are many different sectors for, for you to decide on whether to invest. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. That was Ray Wood, Head of Renewable Energy for Credit Suisse Investment Banking. And if you want to know more about renewable energies, refer to the Credit Suisse website, creditsuisse.com slash markets.